Hello there, welcome to IG. Today we are joined by legendary investor Jim Rogers. So everyone wants to know where you are putting your money at the moment. Gosh, I watch IG. <laughs> that's, how I, <laughs> that's how I find out. No, uh, well, I'm long in China, uh, essentially long China and short the U.S. stock markets. I own a lot of U.S. dollars. I'm short U.S. junk bonds, but in, you know, I have a lot of other things, but in simple terms, that's my most recent stuff. Mm -hmm. And why are you long the U.S. dollar at the moment then? There's going to be a lot of turmoil coming in the next couple of years. And in times of turmoil, Katie, many people look for a safe haven. They think the U.S. dollar is a safe haven. It's not. It's not. America's the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. But since people think the U.S. dollar is safe, they're not going to buy the euro, they're not going to buy the yen, they're not going to buy the pound sterling, they're not going to buy the ruble. Uh, so they're going to put their money in the, in the U.S. dollar. And it will probably go It'll get overpriced, it might even turn into a bubble, depending on how bad the turmoil is. And when that happens, I hope I'm smart enough to sell. What are your top personal picks then? Where are the opportunities globally at the moment? Well, my list at the moment is I, I am short the U.S. stock market, mainly the big, the fangs, as they're called, those stocks that never went down. The reason the market didn't tank last year, and the averages didn't, was because of those 10 stocks that never went down. And so the people think that the market was okay last year. It wasn't. It wasn't okay underneath. But I'm short those stocks. I'm long China. But that's what I have done. I am looking to what to do in the future. I own the U.S. dollars. I own some Russia. I want to buy more Russia. I'm looking at Kazakhstan as a place to be. There are really exciting things taking place in Kazakhstan. Iran, but it's very difficult still for Americans to do business in Iran in the stock market. Uh, Nigeria, I'm looking at, exciting things are taking place. I have not invested in either of those places yet, but these are places where I think there might be exciting opportunities. Mm -hmm. What about gold? I own gold. I haven't really bought much gold in the last uh, five or six years. Uh, I'm expecting a better chance to buy gold. And if it happens, I hope I'm smart enough to do something. Before this is over, Katie, gold is going to wind up in a, in a bubble before it's over. That doesn't mean it can't go down for a while first. No, no, but eventually, as chaos reigns and people lose confidence in everything, whether they should or not, people still will revert to gold and silver just because they always have. You're heavily exposed in agriculture. You always have been, Jim. Uh, what particular stocks are you looking at? Where are the opportunities? Not always have been. I'm, I'm an old person, you know. I <laughs> always is a very long time in my life. Uh, I do own agriculture, and I'm very, very optimistic about agriculture. If I, the way I see the world, agriculture is going to be one of the most exciting parts of the world economy in the next decade, especially in China, because in China they're doing everything they can to give incentives to the rural community to agriculture. I was going to ask you about that then. Is that one of the future uh, markets to look out for, agriculture in China? Especially in China, but agriculture everywhere. Mm -hmm. But Maybe especially Russia. in China. Because the Chinese are doing everything they can. Many countries try to help the farmers, but the Chinese, now Mao Zedong ruined Chinese agriculture. Boy, he was a mess. Uh, and so the Chinese know it, and they're giving huge incentives to the agricultural community and to the rural community. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, you're quite exposed to sugar. Is that right? I own sugar, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but sugar's had a tough when you time. Go, when you go to the restaurant tonight, be sure to get the sugar. Okay. Take it home, okay? Yeah, will do. I like a bit of sugar, don't we all? But why sugar? Because it's down dramatically. I mean, it's, it's down a lot. Yes. Didn't your parents teach you to buy low and sell high? Ah, is that what it is? It's okay. down. It's down, what, 80% from its all-time high. There's not much in life that's down 80, 80 percent from its all-time high. Sugar's one of those things. But isn't there uh, lots of demand coming from the likes of Brazil to use it as a fuel? I mean, there's opportunities But that's for good. If they use it as a fuel, if they burn it up, then that's more demand. Yes. Many people are using sugar, turning sugar into fuel. That's been going on for a while. But there are other reasons to own sugar. Okay. And to conclude then, in terms of agriculture and commodities, what should people be buying then? So we've got sugar because it's a bargain. You should only buy what you yourself know a lot about it. The best thing to do is to become a farmer. Do you know how to drive a tractor, Katie? 
No. <laughs> I've always wanted to learn, but well, no, I think I you should go and learn to drive a tractor. Do you know? Of course. Oh, okay. It's not that hard, <laughs> I assure you. Mm. Now, these great big, huge new things I probably couldn't drive, but it's not that hard to drive a tractor. I drove a tractor when I was 17 years old. Uh, but agriculture has a great future uh, for many, many, many reasons, and not just in China, all over the world. So learn how to drive a tractor. Okay, we'll leave it there. I've got to learn to drive a tractor then. But I want to repeat again, don't buy anything because I have saved by it. Only stay with what you yourself know a lot about. If you can't drive a tractor, you probably shouldn't be investing in agriculture yet. But go buy yourself a farm and learn how to farm. Maybe. Maybe I will. I don't think you <laughs> right. are. Right. Yeah, I think you're just being nice. Go ahead. <laughs> Jim Rogers, thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure. That's legendary investor Jim Rogers.